Hey everybody, Tim here. I'll talk if you'll listen. Episode 41, the big 4-1. And this, I feel, is the start of a new chapter. We already hit episode 40 and episode 40 was the biggest episode I've ever done for so many reasons and I can't wait to tell you all why and how. Uh, But episode 40 was the biggest episode that I did and even to this day sitting here and thinking way back in 2016, 2017 thinking to myself, man, I, I would love to do a podcast. I would love to have a radio show. I would love to just get my thoughts out there and me and my buddy Ryan would sit down and just talk about so many different things uh, weekly at the bar and we can't tell you how deep those conversations would get how polarizing and you know exciting those conversations would get and even to the point where certain people around us either felt uncomfortable or they felt comfortable enough to join and these were conversations that regardless of how you felt always cause people to think differently and always cause people to join in and be a part of the discussion, whether they were comfortable or otherwise. And it's nice just to sit back here in 2020 that there are a lot of things going on in this world right now, specifically our country. There are a lot of things that we can be upset or angry about. I urge everyone to take a step back from their life, especially those of us who maybe have been taking this quarantine quite seriously and have not been leaving the house. And you may find yourself in a situation where you can't take a step back and appreciate the little things. And I can tell you that I really appreciated episode 40. I took a step back, took a look at where the podcast was where it could be and where I'd like to see it. And I like to thank everybody listening, specifically my international listeners, listeners. So uh, I found out it was a nice little surprise earlier in the week that I may have international listeners. The podcast does a good job of giving me statistics on how many downloads and plays, et cetera, et cetera, that I have. And before the day, proceeded before it was past 12 o'clock my time my uh, statistics were already showing me that I had downloads for the following day and this was it's it was almost like looking into the future so whoever is out there listening internationally regardless of where you are I really appreciate it and it would mean the world to me if you could reach out to me and hit me up on the show I'll talk if you'll listen at hotmail.com shoot me an email Follow me on Instagram and shoot me a DM. I'd really appreciate it. I think it'd be really, really cool to hear from you. And uh, with that said, let's let's dive into the show's topics. This show is, although it may not be as long as last week's show, but it's definitely as important, definitely as impactful. I asked several of you a topic about a topic that's been on my mind regarding people losing their jobs surrounding everything that's going on right now. And some of you have very consistent opinions, although they were maybe worded a little differently, although they may have been voiced a little bit differently. I think a lot of people were on the same page. So I'll go over in general, the responses that I've gotten in a bit, but before I do, uh, I'll, just phrase the question. So with everything going on with the back, the black Lives matter, the black lives matter movement, the death of George, George Floyd and all of the protests, riots, looting, everything that's come from it. A lot of people have had different opinions and I've read a, a few different articles, one that I'll mention in a bit in particular that really touched me, but I read a few different articles that pretty much exemplified a lot of people's emotions right now. And one of the most popular emotions is confusion. And a lot of people may not believe that people are confused if you look at what's on the public eye, because sometimes the vocal majority is really the minority, right? You'll really get a lot of people who are shouting and talking about a specific thing. And not too many people feel that way. Uh, Not too many people feel like they are a part of the popular opinion and from the outside looking in, it can look like the popular opinion is the whole slice, the whole pie, and and when in fact it's just a slice. And one of those 
emotions or points pertaining to confusion was what side of this protest do I stand on? How do I feel about the police? How do I feel about black people in general? How do I feel about the protests? How do I feel about the riots? How do I feel about the looting? How do I feel about the curfew? There, there's so many different things and thoughts that can swirl around in all of our heads. And sometimes we just take a step back and we take a look at what everybody is saying or what one particular group is saying. And we go, oh, everybody must feel that way. Everybody must be at the point where they are in this particular box. Everybody is anti-police. So I guess I have to be. Or everybody is pro-riot. So I guess I have to be. And we spoke about this a little bit on last week's episode. If you didn't get a chance to listen to it, I can't put it any more plainly than this. Like literally stop what you're doing right now. Pause this episode and go back and listen to episode 40 because it was a lot of emotion there and a lot of confusion there. And I speak a little bit more in depth about what I'm talking about now, but a lot of people don't know how to feel. But for that small percentage of us who are pretty certain as to how we feel, they go online, they go to Twitter, they go to Facebook, they go to Instagram, they go to YouTube, they take any public platform that they have and they voice their opinion. And sometimes they're a little bit faster than some of us. And sometimes, who knows, maybe they are a little bit more certain about what they feel and what they're thinking. And next thing you know, you're feeling a little bad or you're you're feeling poorly, like, hey, I didn't get out there fast enough and say what I had to say fast enough. I, I didn't get out there and voice my opinion quickly. So clearly I'm on the wrong side of this thing. And one of those things in particular, uh, the opinions that people are sharing out there is where that there's this underlining, I think it kind of passed by since the looting and rioting has slowed down, but I th- there was this invisible and quite unnecessary war that was going on amongst the people, right? Where it was like, Hey, if you are pro riot and pro looting, then, you know, you're, you're, you're anti-police. And if you are pro police, if you are pro, you know, protest and you're anti-riot and you're looking at these other people and you're, you're shunning them and everything. And I read an article in particular that, um, really did a good job of articulating how I felt. And it's multiple things can be true. I usually say two things can be true, but multiple things can be true at a time. You can, I I have very close friends and family members who are police officers. I can sit here and go, Hey, I hate police brutality, but I don't hate you. I don't hate my family. I don't hate my friends. And I think a lot of people who were struggling on where they stood at felt that it was exactly that, a stance. And that's the stance that they had to be a part of. And they couldn't feel any other kind of way regarding any other thing. And that was just, that was just the side of the fence that, that they were on. And the article in particular was by a author by the name of Sandy Smith. And Sandy Smith's article I found on Philly Mag. It was tied, it was, it had a title uh, surrounding, and I'm I'm sorry, I don't have it right here in front of me, but it was basically saying you can be for the protests, you can be for the riots, and it gets the looting all at the same time. And I encourage you all to read it. Again, I found it on phillymag.com, and it was by one Sandy Smith. Go and check that out. It really, I read it on Monday, I read it again on Tuesday, and I was thinking about it for a good chunk of my day on Wednesday, and it really... Touched me so much that I even reached out to Sandy and Sandy replied, Sandy, if you're listening, I really thank you for your reply. I really thank you for your response. And I I appreciate you taking the time to read my response. But a lot of people feel that way. You know, a lot of people can think that, hey, being a vegetarian is the right way to go. That's the way you should start consuming products. You should be a vegetarian. Doesn't mean I hate people who eat meat. It could be a situation where, hey, I love to travel. I love to go outside of my city, outside of my state, outside of my country. Doesn't mean I'm condemning people who don't like to travel. And of course, when it comes to something that's a little bit more relevant, hey, I want to protest. I enjoy protesting. I want to go out and voice my opinion. I want to see police police brutality end. 
I want to see discrimination end. I want to see racism end. Doesn't mean I'm anti-cop or anti-police. Doesn't mean I'm I'm anti-riot or anti-looting. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm anti-voicing your opinion. And I think that there are a lot of people who are bullies out here. They're like social media bullies, right? Where they sit here and they're going, they're thinking to themselves, hey, you don't agree with me. I don't like what you have to say. So now I want you to deal with some sort of consequence. And no matter what, you can never really win with these group, this group of people, because if you don't come out quick enough with a statement, then you're taking too long and you aren't as passionate about it as you need to be. You aren't as emotional about it as you need to be. You don't care as much. You're not as angry because you didn't come out right away and say something. If you take too long, if you come out too soon, oh, that was a purely emotional response and emotional reaction. You needed to have more time to think about what you had to say. You need to have more time to think about your opinion and articulate your thoughts better. You need to have more time to express your view and your opinion. You spoke too quickly. You shouldn't have did that. You know, if you speak one way, you should have spoke the other way and et cetera, et cetera. And I think a lot of us, and I'll, I'll put myself into that. I try not to, I'm not high and mighty, right? I'm, I'm, I'm the same as everyone listening right now. I'm not the person who has all of the answers figured out. So I'll group myself into this as well. I think a lot of the times we, you, I, we fall into this social media bullying type of mindset where because you don't feel how I feel, I have to now bully you into making you feel bad about this thought or this emotion. And because your opinion is different from mine, it's wrong and I need to bash you. And I think that happens most when different representatives or actors or politicians or whatever group of people get on the platform and they voice voice their opinion. If it's not the popular opinion or if people don't like that opinion, people will turn around and kind of just shun them. Right. And, and want them want to see them penalized. So the question that I asked earlier on social media, I asked it on Twitter. I asked it on the Facebook, on the Instagram I feel old when I'm putting the in front of it, the the Facebook and the Instagram, but I put it out there and I, the, the responses I got were overwhelming. You know, people DM me. Um, I had a couple people email me. I had more people respond on the Facebook, um, than they did on the Instagram page. But again, a lot of people feel really passionate about this. More people commented than and some people I haven't even heard of in a while. So it goes to show you that even if someone isn't talking, it doesn't mean that they don't have an opinion about something, but particularly it was an overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly consistent response. The response in general was yes, they should. Yes, they should lose their job. Now it it was different context there. Some, some people said, no, I don't think you should lose your job. If you are speaking on your own personal platform, so if you're in a position where let, let's say you have a professional Twitter and a personal Twitter, as an example, and you go on your personal Twitter and you say, hey, I think, I don't know, H&M is a horrible company or, hey, I think Foot Locker is a fantastic company, whatever the case may be. And it turns out that, you know, that particular company funded a certain political party that most people don't like. People will kind of like react to that and, you know, call for your job or anything like that. And a lot of people say, hey, if you're voicing your opinion from a personal standpoint, then no, you absolutely shouldn't lose your job. No, you absolutely shouldn't be penalized uh, for voicing your opinion or having an opinion or expressing your thought. Other while other people felt differently. Some people specifically, I had a couple people very specifically say, if you are a representative of your company and you're speaking in that capacity, you're speaking from a capacity where you have your company's letterhead, you have your company's logo, you have your company on whatever platform that you're choosing to speak on. That company in particular uh, is representing you and you them. Then absolutely, if you get up there and you say something that's too, let's say, polarizing or it disagrees or is offensive or can alienate certain people a company is going to want to separate from you as quickly as possible especially in the pu- if public perception is that company supports whatever your opinion was 
And it gets to the point where that company is looking at how many dollar signs go down the drain, right? That company is looking at, hey, I don't want to lose any money. I don't want to lose any advertisers. I don't want to lose any potential investors off of your comment. So we need to separate ourselves from you as quickly as possible. So that happens very, very often, very, very often. And I'm kind of on the fence, everybody. I know this isn't the popular opinion. So who knows? Maybe some of you may stop listening to the show. This may separate some of you. But I like to think that you're tuning in to hear my opinion anyway. I like to think that you're tuning in to hear what I think. And my opinion is I think people are just way too sensitive at times. I think if you get on a platform and you say something that's discriminatory or racist, then yes, there should be a level of accountability. And in some cases, that should cause you to be separated from your job or your position, whatever the case may be. I do agree there. But what I don't want is for us to live in this world of fear that we can't share our opinions out of fear of being bashed or lose our jobs. You know, that's or losing our jobs. That's, you know, we don't want to live in this fascist like world where, hey, you can say whatever you want unless I don't like it. And if I don't like it, I got to hold you accountable. And we got to take a look at like some people can make a mistake and it can be OK. Some people may not truly feel what their words said is kind of like how we take it. And we got to give those people an opportunity to apologize while others know very well what they said, what they meant by it. Some people are very aware of what they say and what they mean by it. And and again, either way, you should be held accountable because there are no passes in life. Right. But the level of accountability, I think, needs to change. Take Drew Brees, for example, anyone who is tied into the sports world or even just the black life, black lives matter world. The New Orleans Saints quarterback, Drew Brees, earlier this week had an interview where he said he can never agree with someone who disrespects the flag. And unfortunately, it was a divisive comment that even got his very own teammates uh, ruffled. People got on social media and, of course, other news networks and voiced their displeasure with Drew and how he should have just kept his kept his mouth shut on certain things that he doesn't know much about. One of his teammates, Malcolm Jenkins, former Saint, former Philadelphia Eagle and now current Saint. Malcolm Jenkins said, sometimes, man, I just wish you would shut the F up. And he was very passionate about it. And sometimes people can get on a platform. Drew Brees has since come out and apologized. Drew Brees has even been very active in being a part of the problem. And although I can't cite what he's doing specifically right now, if you care enough, you'll go and look. But he does want to be a part of this. Excuse me, want to be a part of the solution. I think I said part of the problem, be a part of the solution. And I think there's certain scenarios like that where people can't seem to look past certain things and they they make a comment. And it was is an off colored comment, but it, it, it it's a comment that doesn't have too much thought put behind it. And you need to be held accountable for that. Hey, maybe you need to think before you speak next time. But again, at the end of the day, you're just human. Let's take a look at what a person's heart is. Let's take a look at what the person's intent is before we go bashing them. On the flip side, you have people who uh, want to discount and want to not they don't want to validate people's emotions and they paint a false perception or want to push for a false narrative, especially if it's not what that company, what that position, what that political party or what that group represents, then they very much should be held accountable and should be separated, whether it be fired, terminated, reassigned from that particular group. Uh, One person in particular is this uh, commissioner by the name of Joe Gale or Joseph Gale. Um, So I live just outside of Philadelphia in a county called Montgomery County. And in this particular county, we have a commissioner board. And the commissioner of the commissioner board, or at least one of the commissioners of this commissioner board, came out and had a very polarizing and divisive statement that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And he went up and got up and expressed his own opinion and expressed his thoughts that 
I think, believe it or not, I think a lot of people feel, but they, again, are either smart enough or too scared to get up and voice that opinion. But he got up there and I'm going to paraphrase here. If you if you really want to know what he said, you can just Google Joseph Gale. uh, G.A.L.E. is his last name. And if you're not in Pennsylvania or if you're not in the Philadelphia area, if you just want to Google Joseph Gale Montgomery County or Joseph Gale, Pennsylvania, you may be able to come across his original statement. But in short, he was basically saying that Black Lives Matter is a hate group. It pushes a false narrative. He specifically said bogus narrative of police brutality as if it's not a real thing. And he basically said police officers are now now scared to do their jobs because out of fear of being labeled as a racist or someone who is prejudiced. And he also mentioned that he did a lot of bashing of Democrats. He's a Republican. So big surprise, you know, older white Republican uh, probably won't be a big fan of a Democrat and vice versa. And he he did, you know, he bashed Democrats a bit. Um, even his commissioner counterparts are Democrat. And and he uh, he, he voiced his displeasure surrounding the mayor of Philadelphia and Democrats in general. And as a result, a lot of people, they didn't they called for his job. There was actually a petition going about that I think a lot of people don't really understand politics to a degree, but there's a petition going around to have him leave office and resign as the commissioner, et cetera, et cetera. And again, I'm torn. Most people won't like what I have to say, but I want to stay true to myself and I don't want to change my opinion. I by far don't want to pander to you all. There's some of you who are listening who may very much agree with me. Although I disagree with what he said, and I think he does need to be held accountable. I think always going straight for the throat and causing people to lose their jobs off of sharing thoughts and opinions, I think it's just so extreme. It's kind of like wanting to punch somebody in the face for every reason that they upset you. That's what it's kind of it's just really extreme for me. So I'm hoping that some of you listening can maybe chime in and help me understand what your position is there. If if you feel that someone should absolutely lose their job for sharing an opinion similar to Joseph Commissioner Joseph Gale, then please reach out to me. I think he should be held accountable. I think he definitely should issue a statement or an apology. And I think he should be given an opportunity to right or wrong, so to speak. So I definitely don't agree with what he did or said. But I think it's really extreme to call for a person's job, especially when you don't know what type of impact that they've had on the community. Someone could be I don't know either. So I'm not defending this man by far. And I don't want anyone listening to misinterpret me as defending him necessarily. But all I'm saying is someone can literally not know someone past an opinion. Someone can literally not know someone past a thought. And then next thing you know, you're calling for that person's job. That person could be very active in the community. That person could have been standing next to you at a protest the prior week. That person could have paid for your grandmother's groceries not too long ago. That person person can be a part of a nonprofit organization. And they get up there and say pineapple don't belong on pizza and you want them to lose their job. Now, I know I'm at the point where, of course, I could be trivializing what he's saying. Obviously, him saying things like Black Lives Matter is a hate group. And that police brutality is a bogus narrative. I think that's completely insensitive. I think it's incredibly naive. And I think it's very silly, to say the least, to have a stance like that, especially with everything that's going on with Breonna Taylor and um, uh, George Floyd, et cetera, et cetera. I think there's so many different things that you can agree on or disagree on and for him to get up there and use the opportunity to only speak about things that people are divisive on right now. I think that was a poor choice of words. And I think that was a very, I think that was a very, that was very poor execution to say the least. So I'm going to take a quick break, everybody. I'm going to hop on over to my Facebook live and Instagram live and say hi to everybody. And just to get some of their thoughts and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, everybody, I'm back. Again, if 
I've been doing this for about maybe four or five episodes straight now. But if you're new to the game, feel free to follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is public. I do it. I made it public on purpose. I want to interact with everybody who listens to the show, whether I know them or not. So follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is in the description of every show. And fun fact, I actually started my Instagram after I started the show. I didn't have one before I started the show. So I do encourage you to go check out the Instagram. And now you and then you can be a part of these Instagram lives and Facebook lives sessions, things like that. And if you are a personal friend of mine and you are on my Facebook friend friends list, stop by the Facebook live as well. If you choose not to do the Instagram and I would love to just interact with you on a new level. That said, I would really like to hear everybody's reaction and feedback on if someone should lose their job or how people feel. Do you think to classify somebody as a bully when they don't like what they see, so they call for this person's job? Do you think this person is being overly sensitive? Or am I in the wrong by categorizing them in that light? Is there a side or a perspective that I'm not seeing? Is there a side or perspective that I'm not considering? And maybe you need to sit me down and school me. Please reach out to me. I do not bite. And who knows if the conversation is moving enough, you could even be on the show. I want to let everybody know that the show is open to anybody, whether you are a day one listener like Charles or Ryan or even Amanda, or you're just coming on to you know, the show recently. Feel free to hit me up. Feel free to set up an interview time. All the interviews are done over phone. So I'm flexible. I can make as much time as I need to. And we can have you on the show. We can have you discuss your opinion. I try my very best to get people who don't always agree with me and maybe who have a difference of opinion on the show. Because the last thing you all want to hear is someone else who agrees with me. And you may find yourself agreeing with me and you don't want to you know, hear more of people agreeing, agreeing with me. And there could be someone that we just don't consider, you know, I'm sorry, not someone, but someone's perspective that we just don't consider. And I think it'd be really healthy, healthy to move the conversation that way by just considering things that we're not used to. I know a lot of people don't like to have conversations about things that they don't agree with. I know a lot of people don't like to have conversations with or regarding topics that they're sensitive about, but at the end of the day, that's the only way you can move forward. You can't grow. You can't change unless you're willing to be uncomfortable. So keep that in mind. The last thing that I wanted to mention regarding Joseph Gale, again, commissioner of the Montgomery County area, is that there was a protest held outside of his house this past weekend, this weekend, today's Sunday. So this weekend, and a lot of people showed up. I want to say there were dozens of people maybe a little bit under 100 people outside of his home in Plymouth meeting, uh, peacefully protesting, but shouting nonetheless. And there were there was a barricade. There were four Plymouth meeting police officers protecting him. Apparently, he uh, Joseph Gale spent the weekend at Jersey Shore. So people one one person commented and say, hey, maybe we got to come up here and do these protests during the week. He has to come and work eventually. I found that a little a little amusing. But yes, hit them where it hurts. Put people under pressure to have an opportunity to speak. And I think it's um, imperative to let people know that, hey, we, we hear you and we're holding you accountable. Some of you want to hold people a little too accountable. I want them to lose their jobs in some areas. But that said, we do need to hold people accountable. And I think the level of accountability should vary uh, up to termination in some areas, but maybe an apology in others. As long as it's a sincere impo- apology, it's not not a forced apology. You definitely don't want definitely don't want that. That said, I wanted to transition to a little bit more positive outreach. Speaking of protests, a little alliteration for you. We had positive protests for the people. In the city of Philadelphia. And the last one is a PH, but starts with a P. So I'm still going to take credit for it. That said, thousands, you would have thought we won another Super Bowl. Thousands of Philadelphians and people of the surrounding area protested in the Center City area and the Fairmount, the Fairmount Park area of the city, and specifically 
gathered around the art museum and it was just a peaceful peaceful protest it was it was great um to see everybody and to see and hear thousands of people say i will fight for you like to look next to the person next to them and say i will fight for you was what was um just amazing i can't think of too many words to describe it but it was very heartfelt i think it was really cool and it really put my city on the map we're talking eight days straight of protesting and to see that peak that way especially on a weekend when most people may not have to work or handle any other obligations to see them gather and that the, the biggest by far the biggest protest to date in the city regarding George Floyd and racism and black lives mattering. It was, it was just huge. It was nice to see the photo. There was a snippet that got shared by an NBC reporter that was watched over 24 million times. And I couldn't be more prouder. Uh, well, that's, that's poor grammar. I couldn't be more proud of my city just to see that it makes me proud to be a Philadelphian it makes me proud to see things like that. But more importantly, it makes me proud to be black. So more power to everybody out there. Now, there are there were some non black people out there, specifically white people out there who stood in solidarity and was in the trenches, so to speak, with the people of the city who were black or of color. And it really meant a lot to me personally to see that. I think a lot of people, especially now more than ever, have specific views of white, about white people, especially if you grew up in as a baby boomer. You you know, if you grew up as Gen X and for some of us millennials may have very uh, negative views towards white people. And I know there are some of us who don't. Some of us don't have negative views towards white people, but to see white people in general down there, I can't help but to think that regardless of what your view on a white person is, you can sit back and thank them for being a part of the cause. Because just like when it comes to the the women's civil rights movement back in the day, when it came for women to vote, you needed the help of men to help push that along. Just like to get equal rights and equal opportunity and just fair treatment for black people, you need white people to be in your corner and there are a lot of people who are white who I consider family who I love and I know that they were down there in the trenches there were some protests up here in Montgomery County and they were down there in the trenches and I think you know just like we as young people we as black people and someone who is five foot six me as a short person we all don't want to be grouped into the category of all short people all black people all young people do X, Y, or Z. Let's try to practice what we preach and congratulate. Let's condemn the racist white people out there who deserve it. And let's congratulate the white people who are out there shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow with us in the trenches who want to see equal rights, who want to see equality, who want to see equal opportunity in the work environment, who want to see equal opportunity just across the country. And want to see us being treated fairly when whenever we are dealing with someone who enforces the law, whether that be a lawyer, whether that be a well, a lawyer doesn't quite enforce the law. But you get you get the sentiment here. Uh, they want to see equal opportunity. And uh, I think we should do we, we should do equal parts condemning as well as equal parts congratulating. Let's try our best to do that. Speaking of congratulating white people in particular. And speaking of condemning white people in particular, a friend of mine, a listener of the show and someone who I've known for, if not close to over 10 years at this point, buddy of mine, Jesse, currently lives in a certain part of Missouri. And he recently had a experience that I wanted to share with you all because I wanted to talk about it. And I wanted to just tell you all where my heart is and express more confusion. I'm tired of being confused, y'all. And I want y'all to listen to this. So Jesse had a recent experience and he sent it to me via Facebook messenger. And I'm going to take the time to read it now. Out on the river yesterday, I had my first aggressively racist altercation. 
Not the first racist in alter. I'm sorry, not the first racist interaction I've ever had by far. But this guy literally paddled upstream to come and start. He uses some profanity here. I'm just going to say stuff by yelling "Black Lives Matter." No, all lives matter. He dropped the N bomb, and for those of you who used the N bomb, it was the hard ER at that. In the past, when some racist stuff happens. I've at least already been interacting with the person. So what Jesse means by that line is he pretty much has some somber form of relationship with someone who's, who's been racist. This person in particular, he's never met before ever. Surprisingly, not only my friends, but a lot of random people who were also sitting on the gravel bar, enjoying lunch near us came at him hard telling me, don't get yourself in trouble. We got this. Since I was literally about to put my paddle to his head. He ended he ended up getting dropped by some big country white dude who, while other people were forming a wall of bodies between us, backed him all the way into the river. Racist do call him an inward lover. The words had barely left his mouth before his mouth was met by big dude's fist and he almost cartoonishly went down. We're talking family guy falls, guys. Racist dude tried to follow us down the river after that. With I like how Jesse calls him racist dude. Like that's his title, racist dude. Uh, racist dude tried to follow us down the river after that with a few of his buddies. But all of these complete strangers kept intentionally capsizing them in order to prevent them from doing doing so. Other people paddled down river ahead of us. And uh, as we paddled and floated, yelled at us to inform us that they had our back and would ram them if necessary to make sure we reached our destination safely. I was very impressed by how many complete strangers in rural Missouri We're willing to stand up for me. So I want to, there's a few things about that. There's a few things about that that I want to talk about. First things first, he's in rural Missouri. Rural Missouri. I think that's, I think that's worth keying in on there. A. B, the fact that he had a bunch of complete strangers who didn't even know him. Looked at him and made a judgment call based on the cover, color of his skin. And assumed what his stance was. For the sake of argument, Jesse could have, you know, hated black people just as much as this guy did. Well, all that guy saw was Jesse's skin color and say, you know what? I'm going to make a beeline. I'm going to go out of my way to make a beeline to him, to let him know how much I hate him. I hate what he stands for. And I actually want to hurt him. That said, you also had a bunch of complete strangers who stood up for Jesse, who stood side by side with Jesse who protected Jesse and even had one person in particular knock this guy upside the head for Jesse, dropping him where the guy stood. So whenever we make our generalizations, I know sometimes we have to. Sometimes we can't talk about every single last group of people. We can't talk about every woman. So sometimes we have to say all women. Sometimes we can't talk about every city. So we have to say all cities. And sometimes we can't talk about every person who's tall. So we say all tall people. But understand that when we say things like all white people hate black people. Or when we say things that like all country people are this way. There are people out there who were protest like the people who were protest protesting in the city of Philadelphia. There are people out there who were protesting like the people in Plymouth meeting Pennsylvania. There were people out there who are protesting and or standing up for people of color like those complete strangers did for Jesse. And we need to congratulate as much as we condemn. What we don't want to do, and again, this is another unpopular opinion and may get misinterpreted or misconstrued as me bashing one group of people and praising another. That's not what I'm doing. What I want to do is bring attention to everybody who is doing what they're supposed to do and standing up for people of color. We sometimes can be really, really quick to condemn somebody when they're against us. When I say us, I mean people of color. 
we need to do a really good job, like Jesse did, to bring to my attention. And I asked Jesse specifically, hey, can I mention this on your show, on, on my show tonight? Can I mention this? And he said, go ahead. We need people like Jesse, people of color, who have white people specifically in your corner who hate to see discrimination, who hate to see racism, who hate to see prejudice, and are standing side by side with us. We need to encourage them to keep doing the same thing because we need their help more now than ever. You can't change the opinion of a group as a whole unless you have people who are part of that group on your side. Call them sympathizers if you want. Call them inward lovers if you want, like this guy in Jesse's story did very so ignorantly. Call them whatever you want. At the end of the day, they are on our side and they're for the greater good. That's how I see it. Regardless of your stance on how you feel about people who don't look like you, if everybody can agree on one one thing in particular, it's hate there's no there's no time for hate right now. I saw so many signs out there that said no justice, no peace. And I saw a lot of people out there saying black lives matter. There are people out there who truly feel that way. And let's do our best to not discount them because they don't look like us. No, they may not relate to us. No, they may not empathize with us. And no, they may not be able to understand where we're coming from. And most of them will never understand where we're coming from. But that doesn't disqualify their opportunity or disqualify their intent to want to help. Don't shun or condemn somebody before they have a chance to show you what their cards are. Don't fall, Don't make yourself a hypocrite. Don't put yourself in a position where you're judging somebody on the color of their skin. Just as quickly as you claim that someone's doing the same to you. Just throwing it out there. Just some thoughts. I'm going to give you all a little bit of time to sit on that and while I go and check on the Instagram and Facebook followers. But let me know what you think about Jesse's story. Let me know what you think about white people being down for the cause, so to speak. And let me know. Let's have the difficult and uncomfortable conversation. Let me know about how you feel about someone who doesn't look or sound like you, who wants to fight with you and for you. I'll be back in a moment. All right, everybody, I'm back. And again, a a lot of different thoughts this episode and different things that I'm passionate about or at least want to get some feedback on. And again, may not be as long as last week's episode, but still important nonetheless, still important nonetheless. A few more things I want to get you guys' ear on before we wrap up the show is why episode 40 was such a huge show. But before I get to that, I'm going to talk about one thing that I heard a long time ago, and then I heard again recently this week, that really made me, that really sat with my heart, really touched my heart. And it's so very true, so very important. Racism is a disease. There are people out there who literally think that someone is inferior just because of their skin color. They have no idea what's in that person's pocket. They have no idea where that person lives. They have no idea idea how good or how bad of a father, of a mother, of a sister, or of a brother that person is. And they're making a snap judgment based on the person's skin. I wouldn't be surprised if in the near future, racism is classified as a mental illness if it isn't already. Racism is a disease. And we got to take a look at the symptoms of the disease. Hate is a symptom. People hate you by the way that you look, sound, talk. People are afraid of you. People want to destroy you. When you take a look at these things and you take a look at fear, you fear what you don't understand. For all my comic book nerds out there, Professor X said it best, right? You don't, you you fear what you don't understand. And fear 
eventually leads to hate. You hate what you're scared of. You hate what you're afraid of. You hate it so much because you don't understand it. And then eventually, hate leads to destruction. You want to destroy what you hate. You don't like it. It's that black spot on that clean white sheet of paper, right? You want to destroy it. How do we see that in a modern example? Well, we see a group of guys in a neighborhood that maybe we don't know much about. Because we're ignorant, we become afraid. We don't know what these guys on that corner are doing. We don't know why they choose to dress the way that they dress. And I don't know anyone who looks or sounds like them. So I'm ignorant to that image. I'm afraid of that. Next day, they're still on the corner. I still don't know why they're on the corner. I hate that they're on the corner. Why are they on the corner? Then eventually, you want to destroy it. From a police officer's standpoint, you maybe want to go over and break it up. From a politician's standpoint, maybe you want to gentrify or revitalize the area. From a neighbor's stand- standpoint, maybe you want to call the police to break up that gathering of those hoodlums down at the corner. All of these things are symptoms of racism. You got to treat the bone you got to go down to the disease don't treat the symptoms if someone comes out and say that they hate black people they hate people of color don't make them apologize apologize for their statement because they're apologizing for the hatred in their heart they're just apologizing for a symptom people are ignorant they're apologizing for their ignorance on the statement that maybe they made don't make them apologize for that Because again, that's just a symptom, ignorance. A white woman calling the police on black people peacefully protesting or just being out in the cookout. They want to destroy that. Don't make her apologize for the destruction. Again, because the apology will be insincere. It's just a symptom. Whenever you're treating a disease, you got to go down to the source. You got to go down to the bone. The source of hatred, the source of destruction, the source of fear, the source of racism is ignorance. It's it's ignorance. It's not knowing. It's being uneducated. And the cure to the disease of racism is education. There are some of us who had it up to here with racism. There are some of us who had it up to here with discrimination. There's some of us who had it up to here with white people. Let's call it for what it is. Let's not candy coat or sugar coat anything. But for those of us who haven't, for those of us who are willing to voice their opinion, For those of us who are willing to educate, let us do that. Educate people who are willing to be educated and eliminate their ignorance. There are people out here who may be cordial or friendly with some black family members, some black friends, some black neighbors, and may not think that they are prejudiced or racist or discriminatory. Because they have one or two or three black acquaintances. They may need to be educated. Actually, I'll say they do need to be educated. Education is the cure to ignorance. And if we aren't willing to educate people who don't who don't look and sound like us. Then we can't expect change. We can't expect anybody to be any different. Now, you're going to have two types of people. On both sides of the fence. You're going to have the black person or the person of color. Who gets upset. Because they're just so tired. They don't have the patience or the tolerance anymore. To deal with the ignorance. To deal with the fear. To deal with the hate. To deal with the destruction. And they're washing their hands of it. Peace them out. Racism is Pam and that person of color is Martin. And they are kicking it out of their apartments. 
That's how they feel. They're done with it. They're fed up. Get out. But you're also going to have those people of color who maybe are a little bit more patient, who maybe are a little bit more tolerant and are willing to educate. Hey, this is why you don't do that. This is why you don't say that. On the other side, you're going to have people who aren't black or brown, who who are specifically white, who don't want to learn. They don't want to say, hey, why was that wrong? I don't care. Black people are inferior. Black people are ghetto or they live in ghettos. Ghettos are now black people live in ghettos. Black people speak funny. Black people are uneducated. Black people are lazy. I don't want to learn anything about them. I don't want to have anything to do with them. I'm okay with living in this fantasy world. Those are the people for us. Those aren't the people that we want in our world. Let them stay in their ignorance. They won't help, but let's not waste our time and energy on them. Then you're going to have other groups of people who are not black or brown or specifically white. And they do want to learn. Hey, I noticed when I said this thing, you know, Rachel reacted a certain way or, hey, I know that when I said this thing, Tyrone reacted a certain way. Hey, I, I know when I said this thing. Mike acted a certain way. Why is that? How come they don't want to hang out with me anymore? How come they acted so aggressively? How come they got so confrontational? How come they got teared up and and got, and got upset and cried? And why don't they want to hang out with me anymore? Why did this person call me racist? And they genuinely want to know. They genuinely want to be educated. Let's take the opportunity to educate them. Let's take the opportunity to eliminate this disease that's called racism. And we can do it in our own ways. There are people out there who says, hey, you're not on the front lines protesting, so clearly you don't care. You don't want to eliminate racism. There's people out there who said, hey, you don't, you didn't contribute to a black-owned business or you didn't contribute to somebody's GoFundMe. You didn't contribute to George Floyd's funeral or memorial fund. You didn't pay for his child scholarship. So no way, no way you feel about this as much as I do. There are people out there who are like that. And they're angry and upset. Let them be. But there are also people out there who want to learn. There are people out there who, who want to get educated. And as I said earlier in the show, we need to have people who don't look and sound like us to help voice our opinions to the other people who don't look and sound like us. There is, I forget the guy's name, but sorry again, I might be alienating some of my audience here, but the quarterback who got drafted last year for the quarter uh, for the uh, Buffalo Bills had a comment where he was talking with someone who said guns should only be made guns should be expensive enough that only elite white people can afford them. And he said that. And the text message got shared. Somebody else reached out to him and reached out to the person who shared that text message and said, Hey, please take it down. Please take it down. Please take it down. The white person, the white young lady in particular who shared it said, no, people need to see this. And essentially, I'm paraphrasing here, he needs to be held accountable. That's not right. And I encourage you, all of the white people out here who they want to know, hey, what can they do to help? And maybe your pockets are a little too aren't deep enough and you can't contribute to that charity or that fund or that grant. Uh, maybe your availability or your health doesn't allow you to go and protest. That's fine. There's also an opportunity. There's also a chance for you to check your other white friends who are exhibiting racist behavior or a racist demeanor. You can check them behind closed doors because if they voice their racist opinions or thoughts or expressions behind closed doors specifically to you, They may misinterpret it and think you feel the same as they do. And sometimes it takes for someone who looks and sounds like you to call you out on your BS and to check you and hold you accountable for you to really sit down and go, damn, maybe that was a little racist or damn, maybe that was a little wrong. Maybe I shouldn't have did or said that. 
Behind closed doors, check your friends. In public, pull them to the side, check your friends. And in some cases, in public, call them out. At the end of the day, it's all about accountability. It's accountability for black and brown people. It's accountability for police officers. It's accountability for government officials and politicians. It's accountability for white people. It's accountability for communities. Hold yourself and the people around you accountable. And maybe we won't have another situation like George Floyd. One last thought on a happy note. I'm really happy about the show, episode 40. I've received some gifts from some people on achieving a milestone. I'm really appreciative of that. I'm really thankful for that. Thank you so much. You didn't have to do that. I really appreciate it. Uh, Trust me when I say all of the gifts that I got, if they aren't physical gifts, they will get pumped back into the show. I won't take your gift for granted. I will use it for the power of good. You got my word there. Also, this was the largest in the span of a week. Less than a week, technically. The show got over 100 downloads. So, hey, I'm talking to somebody's listening out there. The show got over 100 downloads in the span of six days. And it was the largest quantity of downloads that I've gotten since the show aired. So, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Episode 40 was a huge milestone. I'm looking forward to episode 80. I'm looking forward to episode 50. I'm looking forward to episode 200. I'm going to keep doing this for as long as I'm able. I think the benefit of not getting paid to do this and the benefit of not having this to be my primary source of income is it can stay in a hobby zone. And I can get on here and just talk to you all. I, I I almost envision you all in front of me as I say things like this. And I'm really, really glad to be a part of your community. I'm really glad to be on your podcast list. And I encourage you to share it with somebody who may be looking for something new to listen to. That said, there are a lot of other things going on in my life right now. And I feel like I kept you all long enough. But I will say that I did start therapy. I had my first therapy session. It was a great session. And my next one is this upcoming week on Thursday. Hopefully nothing polarizing will happen in the news between now and then. And I can give you all a little bit more insight on how my therapy has been going. And some of the challenges and wins that I've had, not only in my relationship, but uh, with therapy in general. And it was very enlightening, to say the least, and very insightful. Please, 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 for everybody listening and for the men in particular, get therapy, especially if you're in a relationship. You need it. And if you don't think you need it, you're proving my point because you need it. That said, hit me up offline and let me know if you need help looking for therapists and how you can go about maybe even getting free therapy. You won't have to pay for it. I always say if it's free, it's for me. If you treat and I'm eating. That said, everybody, it's always fun to sit down and talk to you for a little bit. Thank you for a slice of your time. And as always, I'll keep talking if you'll listen. Take care. <laughs>